Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters Kanavitsa! I love this crowd, it's fantastic. I love Poland, it's fantastic here. Uh, we have another semi-final on the way. We are running a little bit late, so we apologize for that. We also apologize, we've had a few issues on the stream, which we're hoping are now fixed, so you can enjoy this second semi-final. Uh, the players are already in their positions, uh, but don't forget, there's also a competition for the MVP vote, which is now going on on facebook.com forward slash IEM. Ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise for the two semi-finalists, Azubu Frost and Gambit Gaming. Okay, we're not going to keep you waiting any longer whatsoever. Let's go over to Jason and Panky at the experts' desk. Hopefully, another exciting best of three here: Azubu Frost versus Gambit Gaming. We saw day one, Gambit Gaming. They didn't look that good, unfortunately. They squeaked by um, through time, actually going to be qualified for the playoffs. And then Azubu Frost, another, uh, another Azubu that went 3-0 in the group. Yeah, I mean, everyone's expecting uh, an Azubu Azubu final, as we mentioned right at the start of the day. That was, that was everyone's prediction. As soon as we saw the groups, they were like, all right, Korean final, Azubu Azubu. That's now down to Gambit to change. They are our, the last hope for uh, a non-all-Korean final. They are a very strong team, or they were a very strong team. Friday, not so much. Hopefully they can turn it around. We'd love to see them there in the final. If they do turn it around, it's going to be a very, very interesting task because Frost are huge. All right, we're going to get the player sheet on the screen for you guys of Azubu Frost just to show you their lineup. We have Shy going to be in the top lane for them. Rapid Star going to be in the mid lane. Cloud, wow, I said that wrong. Cloud Templar in the jungle. Woong on AD carry and Mad Life as a support. And Panky, who so far has been the key player for the team and who do you think is going to be the key player in this best of three? It's going to depend on the champions. Right? It's going to depend on how they build their comps, blah, blah, blah. But Woong had some phenomenal plays earlier on in his tournament. Some of his misfortune plays, his double up usage was incredible. The ultimates and stuff he's getting to him, hunting people down, really, really held them out. That all being said, Clown, Tempar, Rapid Star, very, very strong players. Depending on who they play, they can also influence the uh, flow of a game really, really well. Of course, you still have Mad Life, amazing Blitzcrank player as we saw at OGN. The Tarek play on that uh, oh, yeah, lane the as well, that was incredible the way he flashed in that last auto attack just to secure that first blood, really set that lane snowballing too. So yeah, very, very powerful. Team. All right, well Gambit Game, let's get their play sheet on the screen for you guys so you can see their lineup. Uh, it's no longer Moscow 5. You have Alexic in the mid lane, Genji going to be on the AD carry. Edward, formerly Ghostu Pepper, going to be as support. Darian in the top lane and Diamond Prox in the jungle. Now, I'm trying to ask for a key player for their team, but it just kind of no one really shined through in the group stage for them. No, they were all slightly underwhelming to be completely honest in the group. That's what we said. They uh, lost that first game very one-sidedly to a Zubu Blaze, and they picked... I mean, they had a strong comp. They had a Moomoo Misfortune, Kale, so right. Renekton. The Renekton, we said at the start, was a bit... not so sure... Well, he lost the early game, convinced. Yeah, and then and it snowballed he, against he's them. He's an early game champion, and then he lost the early game. But the rest of their comp's still very strong. They just couldn't quite get it in there. There was a lot of chances when they... Uh, Landed that Amumu ultimate, landed the Misfortune ultimate, missed the Sonar, they couldn't quite get that last little bit going. It just kind of fell apart bit by bit, but Marinta Champions Lake, we'll see if they go with it again. If they do get that comp now, they've had a day to practice, they've had a day to relax, a day to uh, research, blaze a bit. With any luck, they might be a little bit stronger, a little bit more relaxed and calm. I know, but we mentioned yesterday, Haiki bot taking his shoes off when they were playing the SK versus Fnatic game. Goes to Pepper, uh, Edward now does the same thing. It's all about. I'm hoping that's the only thing he has in. off right now. There might be a little awkward if he has to stand up. <laughs> but hopefully, we'll get back into the picks events. I mean, yeah, Gambit, they did have a day break. They had time to, you know, actually practice. Well, actually, when we were um, trying to get into the games yesterday, we saw um, Curse and Gambit actually practicing against each other. So yep, maybe true. Gambit going to be um, showing a stronger uh, team here. As we do finally get back into the picks and bands, Leeson as the first band coming out of a Zubu Frost going to be your blue team here. And obviously, that will be targeted at Diamond Prox. And a very quick Olaf ban as well coming out from Gambit. Actually, fact, very quick bans. Very quick bans, yes. Yeah, so they know exactly what they want to do, taking them away from this uh, Korean side. Olaf, we've said it over and over again at the moment, but he is very strong in our current game. In this season, three Ooh. match, the 1.7.3 that we have here, 
build a couple of giants built that really cost effective my attempt oh, no. and he starts to get more and more powerful ban them is fortunate as well to destroy that comp and in reverse Zubu have banned down that cow taken it away from Alex Hitch because we know he's been playing that a lot in the mid lane now for the last two days we saw lots of Evelyn bans we never saw her played at all well now Ras has hit three games in a row well, we've seen Blaze and Ojan ban uh, Evelyn against Frost just to prevent Rapid Star from playing him in the mid lane. So Gambit might have messed up a little bit there, but we'll see how it all kind of pans out as we do have Kazix being locked in right away. Gambit wants to give him another try in, uh, well, potentially the, the mid lane, even the top lane. Obviously not sure just yet. I think it could be the mid lane. Alex has been playing Kazix mm -hmm. a lot in there. It was a very quick lock in from him. It's like determined is there. She, so he does quite well against Evelyn too. Of course, that, that very strong push. So if she roams, he's going to get it onto the tower. She's going to lose a lot of gold experience is going to start to chunk away the health on that mid turret. They're both melee champions. They can both farm fairly well in that early game in the lane. He is very strong before she hits 6-2, and she's, he's going to be able to bully her around a little bit. Keep in mind, Azuka Frost shy. I mean, we have Singe. We have Jax open. As you just saw, Darren kind of hover over Jax for a second. Looks like he want to bait him into that pick. But obviously, we haven't seen it too much lately um, in Season 3. We do have a Mumu being set on. I mean, Frost, they've been playing against that curse to the side bolt time for weeks now in OGN. I mean, obviously they have strats against it. Ooh, we could see actually a Nocturne coming out of Cloud Templar as they do switch it around to Rengar. But, I mean, we already have a strong AoE out of Evelyn. If this Mumu does get locked in, what else do you expect to see? They've got a lot of other options. The Sona would be there. That would be very nice too. And if you've got Evelyn and Rengar now leaping through the team fight while they're both locked up in Sona or in the Mumu, that can be very powerful. But he's also now hovering on Graves. He was there very briefly on Nocturne, which we saw KT rolls to be actually running the mid lane not so long ago at and There's something that's new and that a couple of people are trying. We're yet to really see any of the European teams try it. So if there was something they thought about running, they could still pick it later on. Could still throw Gambit off guard if they're not ready for it. But oh, Diamond, wow. very quick looking on that Zin Shout, something which we saw him play earlier on in the tournament. Something that actually, back when they were Moscow 5, they did long before anyone else. Zin yeah. Shout obviously they recently did. went through a rework. So oh they my gosh, we're kit. seeing Blitzcrank, so sorry, being sat on by Mad Life. It and it does get locked in. Life. We're going to see some amazing pulls this game. But we saw like Diamond Prox was playing Zin Chao before they reworked him. Then they reworked him and he played him again. Played him very similarly. But it also now, it wasn't just that he worked how he played him before. He worked him with some new builds now. And now with Black Cleaver getting stronger and things too. There's a lot more options to do with that Zin. He's a very strong early game jungler. Can really start to set the pace of a game. And if you combine that up with Kazik's early strength, they can bully Shy quite a bit in that mid lane. Yep, and we do have last pick for Zubu Frost here, going to be locked in very shortly. It looks like he might even play a Zed, which, I mean, it's kind of appearing everywhere in the world now. Everyone really enjoying him in the top lane, even the jungle, to be honest. Um, we've seen him a couple of times. And, I mean, we have kind of a, a pseudo-squishy team for Frost. I mean, it's very misleading. You have the Mumu. I mean, we saw in the last couple of games, the Mumu had a really hard time um, of getting tanky enough from Fnatic. We do get Singe locked in, so we will have Shy in that top lane on his famous Singe, playing against SK, who I believe it was in the World Finals, and just decimating them. Yeah, we like... He almost single-handedly destroyed it. That was that was Shire's show in that game. As we were pointing out yesterday when we were talking with SK, he put no points in his slow, it was all in his fling, all in his poison, so much damage. It was up past the tier three turret within like 12 minutes or something crazy. Just doing all kinds of things and controlling that game. It's in here, Mad Life's on his Blitzcrank. There's a lot of champions in there, which Azubu would know and love. Gambit playing brave, giving it to them. And looking to go towards their Renekton again too, but as I said, the same thing. They've got a lot of champions they love. Um, that uh, old Kosu Pepper now, Edward Sona, was something that he used to be famous for because he used to steal kills and he used to do a lot of damage on it. He used to be incredibly aggressive in that lane. <laughs> <laughs> he used to be 2v1ing people on that Sona as well. I mean, we've seen him 2v1 people down on Blitzcrank do the same on Sona. Diamond Proctor's again, that's in Chow, something which he is very known and used to. Alex has been playing a lot of Kazakhs mid at the moment, and it does look like Darren is keeping that Renekton. Yeah, he's going to go for a round two on this Renekton in the top lane. See if he does a little bit better this time, uh, other than last time, as we do have just switching around the champions right now. And, you know, looking at the game, early game to late game, who do you think really has it? I want to give the early game to Gambit. They've got that Kazik, they've got that Renekton, they've got that Zin Chao. But at the same time, Zubu are very good at playing safe. Lots of early wardings. We saw it from Blaze as well. And uh, just the Korean style, that uh, lots of wards in the early levels. So first three minutes, the river is completely covered. The jungle right. is completely covered. And you're not really getting any kind of impact from that early game presence of Diamond Proxel from Renekton. So providing they can survive that, providing they can make the most of those wards and uh, Gambit fall prey to them and don't avoid them, then uh, Zubu should get that chance to build up 
farm up, get that little bit stronger, and then they're going to start to control these team fights later on. And one thing that Frost does also in their favor, we, we can't really not talk about this, is you have a pull from Blitzcrank, and then you have a fling run after that. So if you ever get pulled, you're going to be completely out of position, and with the Graves attacking you, with the amount of burst he has, the amount of just flat damage he has, you're going to have a tough time surviving that. As we do finally get into the loading screen, I'm going to have to give it, I don't know, just with the way Gambit's been playing, I want to see them you know, do well. I want to see a three-game series here, but Frost, they just look so solid in, uh, yesterday. Yeah, Frost, I mean, that's... The, the current teams all over, we've said it time and time again, their, their execution, their teamwork, their communication, it's just perfect. We saw Blaze methodically dismantling Fnatic in the two games they won. They said, all right, we're going to take all the turrets now. All the outer turrets just dropped. Okay, we're going to push and take the next ones now. And they slowly just went from lane to lane, taking turret after turret onto the inhibitor turrets. Switched on one, switched on the next one. Slowly just took everything apart methodically, carefully, and didn't risk with any crazy dives. Well, guys, we are on a game, so we're going to pass it to our casters, Joe, Demon, and Jat. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's a Zubu Frost this time around versus Gambit Gaming, a.k.a. Moscow 5. Everybody knows them from that one, but they have changed organizations. Uh, Zubu Frost, they picked up pretty much their perfect team there, I believe. Blitzcrank Madlife is a scary thing to behold. Four times he played it against the Zubu Blaze, won every single game. Cloud Templar, Goon Wung, of course, on Graves. These are all champions they are so, so used to. Rapid start on Evelyn. Gambit Gaming, though. They've got Kazix in that mid lane. Alex Itch, we know how deadly that guy can be. See hero, kill hero was the famous line from Intel Extreme Masters in Kiev. But on your screens, it is the blue team of Azubu Frost. And can they prevent an all Korean final? Gambit Gaming as the red side. Well, here we go. Azubu working their way through into that top side of the Gambit jungle. Putting a couple of wards down there, they were spotted by that one. You can just see the uh, Q there of Ezreal landing on towards Madlife. Early pink ward actually put down by Edward, aka Gosu Pepper, to take away the ward that was just placed by Azubu on that top side. But it looks like we're going to be seeing a fairly standard start either way. Yeah, definitely setting themselves out fairly standard, but it does look like we are going to have the single lane of Darian down the bottom. Pretty much sure he's going to be up against the duo lane of Wung and Madlife. That's going to be a tricky one to, for him to hold out. So we do see Edward and Genja heading north against that Singe. Singe, as they mentioned in the in the pregame, just the fact that he was just so strong against SK Gaming on Singed. And it's going to be interesting to see if Shy can survive against this two-man lane. Normally, this is the response against Singed. He did manage to deal with it in the few games he's played Singed at Season 2 Finals, but this is a tough matchup with Heavy Poke coming up from both Sona and Ezreal. Down in that bottom lane, obviously Renekton, we've got to be careful here not to be picked out by Madlife, who's through the OGN, ridiculous scores even on these Blitzcrank, and he's been so, so amazing with it, and now there's definitely going to see some great pulls out of him here for this one as well. So, lane's kind of uh, setting themselves in here, obviously middle lane going to be Kazix, Versus Evelyn, Dean, what do you think to that one? Well, it's definitely going to be a close one. Kazix, of course, Alex Hitch, we've seen him in fantastical championship, but rapid start on Evelyn. You know, there's a reason that Evelyn is banned in the Korean games all the time, and they are just so strong on it. The question is, though, Kazix can be strong early levels, and that is exactly where I expect to see him trying to bully on towards Evelyn. That bottom lane, we saw Madlife scouting out, Shy's being pushed in the top. There was a lot of zoning. We do have Cloud Templar sat ready and waiting, but Diamond Prox is also coming around the side. This could be very, very dangerous. Cloud Templar oh, is it's waiting in the that try, but she can't see him just yet. He's not come around through that fog of war. They're waiting for Singe to make his move. Cloud Templar sticking to his position here. Diamond Prox now gonna come around into that try, but will get spotted as they go in on towards Edward. He's flung underneath the tower. There's the Ignite. First foot coming down for Cloud Templar. And they can't finish it off either. They do keep the pressure on Cloud Templar. Did come in. Brilliant, brilliant play from Azubu. They reacted so well. I'm pretty sure that Amumu saw Xin Zhao coming by from that brush. That's why they were so ready to do the stun to fling combo the instant Edward picked up Tower Agro. So a disastrous attempted 3v1 dive on Shy. Alex is getting aggressive on Rapid Star in that mid lane. It's going to be very much a back and forth, very hard for the cameraman to keep up on that one as well, especially with these duo lanes versus the solo queues. There's going to be a lot of damage across the board. Alex is keeping up the farm though alongside him. 16 to 18 Rapid Star. This seems to be to me, the pivotal lane. 
Yeah, going to be a very interesting one to say the least. And Rapid, so you can see, really starting to sting there, Alex. But he's going to have the same going forward as he uh, levels up that W. Let's see then where the next action is going to come down. Mad Life just forcing Darian completely out of that lane there. Darian knows that he can't go too deep into that one. I wonder if we'll see um, a Moomoo -moo actually coming around to try a similar thing onto this bottom lane, which is what we generally see when it comes to a two versus one lane. We saw it time and time again at IPL. We've seen it this tournament even um, you know, going wrong as well. And if this backfires, they are both at level four. You can see as Ten Cloud Templar coming around the side there. He's going to get a bit of poke. Misses the bandage, does actually. Tries to produce it out now. And now he's in trouble himself there. Again, just putting the pressure back onto him. Using the glue to get defensive. And has to flash out. Fling actually from Shy almost towards Cloud Templar. Yeah. That could have been tragic. That could have been a little bit of a dodgy move there as uh, Cloud Temple would have said, yeah, thanks, mate. That's uh, very nice of you to do that one. Uh, but we are going to see here Shout coming around the backside. What can they do? Obviously, he's got that red buff on. We see the exhaust go down. Mad Life forced to flash away. We're going to turn around here and do some good damage onto Darian. He's going to get knocked up here in the air by Mad Life. Oh, and he flashes just out of range from the pole. Very close stuff without flash. That big fist from the Piltover Mad Life was just an inch away and unfortunately he did manage to get away. Darian actually managed to take out a fresh ward in that brush by doing an auto attack reset with his W, which was really cool. And it's, it's strange to me that Darian plays so much Renekton. I was mentioning this earlier, but especially in a 2v1 lane where he's going to be denied most of his farm, you really want to get something that will scale up later with levels. And Renekton, unless he gets monstrous, doesn't really take over games. But we consistently see Darian pick this champion. Well, well if you remember back the interviews that Moscow 5 had, as they were, when they, as and when they were Moscow 5, they always said, well, if Darian doesn't feed, we might do all right. <laughs> but if he does, we just leave him alone. Yeah, and that's, that can't be the case in this one. I mean, up till now, fingers crossed from uh, Gambit's side of things, he's not doing half bad in that Switching. bottom lane. Yeah, they are going to switch it around. Actually, yeah, we see that Renekton going into the middle lane. Why did Darian go for the middle one there instead of the 40 gold minion? Instead, he went for the 16 gold caster minion. Instead, <laughs> I what? I think we call that a mistake? I, uh, maybe, yeah. maybe. Maybe he's just forgot that that, that gold was uh, definitely changed in season three. Nevertheless, we do have now Alex Hitch down in that bottom lane against Wunga Madlife. So, level four versus level five Kazix. Kazix going to avoid the damage here, just jumps away. That was very close, that grab, actually, from pulling him straight back. Interesting to see, meanwhile, at the top lane, we also see Genja getting very aggressive. We do have Darian heading back down the bottom, but he's going to walk straight past that ward. Yeah, straight in through that ward. No problem whatsoever for Azugu Frost in that one. And it looks like we're going to see another switch over here. Yeah, they're just trying to react, trying to keep Azugu Frost on their toes, it seems. But Alex has got to be careful. He doesn't get caught out going up through that blue instead. And while Cloud Templar reacted to this, the blue has just spawned. Cloud Templar's going to come around. He's going to spot him straight away. Puts the voice boy straight into his face. And Cloud Templar, there we go. Azubu, four-man invade into the blue. Trying to deny as much as they possibly can here from Gambit Gaming. That blue buff is going to be picked up here by Rapid Star, which is only going to make him more annoying in that jungle. Over on the other side, we see that Gambit going down towards the Azubu Frost blue as well. They're hoping they're going to be able to steal that one. It was a little delayed in the way it came up, and Shy doing a hell of a job trying to harass down Genja. I wonder if they're going to stop this from going in as Alex gets flashed over the wall. Meanwhile, you can see at the top lane, they've just gone in towards Shy. Shy's going to get taken down by Diamond Prox. He comes around the side there. We also have Alex Hitch coming up now. The blue buff has respawned, and here comes Alex Hitch going to try and steal it. One of his own Tech Cloud Templar is ready and waiting. He has got Smite available. They put the ward down. That's going to force him away. This is going to get picked up by Alex Hitch. Nice pickup in response to losing their own blue buff and not to mention that kill coming down on that top lane which uh, went over towards Diamond and they're going to set up a two-man trap here once again in that tri-bush but in the end they decide well let's just have a go see if we can take down the turret here. I think they're going to go for the early pressure they know they have Shy a little bit on his heels they're going to try to keep him down and I want to go bottom lane actually pointing out Mad Life rushing boots on Blitzcrank that really makes his pulls that much more threatening because he's basically just going to run at the target to try to punch them off and get closer and closer, which makes his hooks easier to land. It's one of the reasons he's so good on Blitzcrank. And if you remember back when to the Season 2 Finals, we discussed Mad Life back then, talking about how he has written down the exact speed and length with boots with, with certain levels, exactly how much he can get in there to grab onto those units and just pull a hero in there. You know, Mad Life, he, he tends to have those grabs. He, he wins all the games when he plays 
Blitzcrank is, is no, it's a simple fact. And when you're doing that against the Zubu Blaze, it's something they definitely have to watch out for. Alexic farming up in that mid lane. Definitely behind in the farm though against Rapid Start. Meanwhile, the two solo laners, despite the fact they've been 1v2, is being won out by Shy. He's having a better look on the bottom. Also, Goon Wum heading against Genja. And he's winning out. So all the lines currently are heading CS. Uh, we just saw that Shy do a typical Singe fashion, taking the minions completely away, meaning that that tower faces then a lot of pressure. Actually going to head down through that Gambit jungle. Will he head towards mid lane? No, looks like he's just going to come back in towards his top lane. Does have level advantage over Darian as well there, and he's just simply going to scoot on by. Just going to do a little drive by there, lay the poison down towards the turret, try and get as much on towards Darian, but he's quite happily just last hitting on the minions as i say that he gets flicked straight away and misses a minion manages to get back on towards them shy is going to wipe out that wave pretty quickly cloud templar in the mid lane meanwhile is getting ready how's his diamond prox and i gotta say shy has an amazing amount of confidence up top here he doesn't have a turret to fall back into so if anyone collapses up for him he's got a mile to run before he would get to safety but with all that gamma gaming is just not in position to punish so he's free to farm that wave in between the turret We've got a pink ward being put down there by the dragon as well. Ping's actually going down on the Azubu Frost side of things. Diamond Prox here headed up towards that river will be spotted by the ward in that one. So uh, once we get Evelyn back into this middle lane, it's going to know that Diamond Prox is around there. In fact, they're going to try and lay down some pressure on the tower. Yeah, they're probably going to put a lot of damage down here as well. But no, they're going to back off. Rapid Star was a distance away from that one. They could, like you mentioned, go straight towards Shy in that top lane. He's continued to try and farm it out up there. Has gone back to buy. Let's see what he picks up. It's a giant's belt. Well, of course it is. What else would you get? A directly a war mods. <laughs> <laughs> but who knows where he's uh, going to end up going with that one um, in a little while. But in terms of the uh, CS now in this bottom lane, 96 to 88. So getting around about that 10 CS lead is another grab comes out there. Gendra actually used his arcane shift to get away. And didn't end up getting pulled in the end from that one. So looking at the gold, very, very even still. Only around about 100 to 150, I'd say, the way it's ticking over the difference. You can see the pink ward that Gambit Gaming has on Dragon. And in the past, in the recent past, when they've been struggling a bit, it's because they throw away games at Dragon fights. They either go for Dragon too early or try to stop the other team from taking it. And with that pink ward there, I'm actually expecting them to go for it very shortly. And if they did, it would be very dangerous against a team like Azubu, having the Amumu and Evelyn alts up the whole time and yet to be used. Well, you can see Alex coming round in towards it. He's going to go, oh, oh Rapid oh. Star steals away the large right there. This is known for cleaning out that wave, but everybody does it these days. He tends to start it off. Darian, meanwhile, you can see the health on him. He's starting to drop down because Shy is just motoring away. And they're just going to leave him. Thing. He's got the ultimate running. He's going to go in towards Darian here. Darian already low. He's going to get around there with the poison running. But Darian is sliced nice and away. He's going to get the fling back on him. Forces the flash. Now he gets the glue down. Darian is going to get caught out. Has to use his ultimate. He's got Diamond Prox coming in towards to help him out. Meanwhile, they're down in the mid lane. Alex has been completely pincer moved by Cloud Templar and Rapid Star. They're back on towards Shy, but Shy is going to get away. Diamond Prox will get the knockup, but no, they cannot pursue this because Alex got took down in that jungle. And that is the beauty of Sinch right there. Just able to run rings around your opponents. They've managed to even bait Alex Itch from that middle lane up towards the top and therefore caught him in the jungle to bring themselves 2-1 ahead in the kills. Rapid Star also coming up towards the tower. They could try and dive him here. They've got the ability. And there goes Diamond Prox. He's going to get caught down. He will get the knockup. He's got the ignite down on him. Rapid Star is taking a lot of hits from that tower. He's going to get taken down very low. Nobody's there to follow it up, though. And unfortunately for them, if they've just returned in time, as Cloud Templar stole away the blue buff, he didn't manage to get it. And Azubu Blaze start Frost, sorry, starting to pull some advantages. I did a pull channel. <laughs> we'll do it probably even more today as well there. Uh, but that's 94 to 73 CS there. Singed probably sat on a decent amount of gold right now before he uh, goes home. And in fact, Shai is going to be headed home. We'll see what he uh, decides to pick up. There is a chain vest. So uh, nice little items here right from the very start. But Got into a bit of a slower period. Both teams wanting to get as much farm as they can right now. Yeah, so, man life in this bottom lane. Sat ready and waiting to try and pull something out. Alex is just heading down, actually, towards the Dragon, as is Diamond Prox. Here comes the duo lane. Looks like Gambit are going to go for the Dragon here. They are already starting this one off. And to be honest with you, Azubu Frost aren't going to be in a position to do anything about this one whatsoever. 
So a really good dragon pick up there. We mentioned earlier how sometimes they've gotten themselves in trouble by going for it early. With that one, they really make up for the kills that Shy's pressure down on them, getting even in gold. Yeah, just slightly ahead. Blue buff was picked up. Rapid start, taking his own blue buff. Of course, that means they've got both because Clown Templar stole away the Gambit one earlier. And I also want to point out the difference in jungling builds from Amumus we've seen. Cloud Templar is maxing his E on Amumu right now. All the other Amumus we've seen have been maxing Despair on W. I feel like this is the more common Amumu setup. You max your Tantrum and then your Bandage Toss, so you can chain the Bandage Tosses over and over in teamfights once he gets it. Well, he is level 9, so uh, surely going to be seeing him getting more involved in these lanes and getting that ultimate running as well to lock things down. We've actually got the Bloodthirster already finished here on Womb, and that will be their first tower of this game. That is uh, obviously in reply to the outer turret in that top lane that was taken down earlier by Gambit, and now they're putting more pressure onto the middle. Yeah, and you can see Cloud Templar is going to come around. We'll put a bit of the hits on it, Alex actually choosing to stay away. They're kind of choosing to keep this turret here. They've had a few chances where they could have got a good few swings on towards that turret and instead kept the distance. Happy to stay there a little bit longer in the lane phase. Maybe it's something that Gambit has been working for. And that is going to be the race picked up by Alex. And this is really in pretty stark contrast to the games we saw from Azubu Blaze where it was just all turrets all the time. These guys really taking their time to farm on the lanes and get pretty powerful. And you can see Azubu now starting to stack up in that middle. As soon as they took that bottom, this is generally what they do. And they're going to four man stack it. There's nothing they can do to try and prevent this one. You can see Edward just off the side. Darian's going to come in as well, but doesn't want to get caught out. He's going to get punched here. He's going to get stunned up. That's going to be straight on towards Mad Life. Can he finish this one through? The rest of Gambit now coming in. You can see Alex is just off the side. They are going to leave straight in. Good one gets dropped straight away, but they're going to try and turn it around. Curse of the Sad Mommy wasn't enough. Mad Life taken down. Darian gets dropped out there. Diamond Prox gets flung away. You can see the boys box slowing them down and now Shy's going to get in on towards Edward can he get the fling down Genja's back in now Genja coming in and it's going to be an even trade Goon Wound for Darian and Wound taken out there I mean he was doing well down there he was uh, slightly ahead in that farm edge rail actually uh, just getting a bit before that uh, just getting a bit more before he came in towards that fight and that's going to be nice play coming down out of Genja now got that BF sword along with a pickaxe and a vamp scepter and now it's Gambit, who have got four men in and around this middle turret, and that is going to be made short work of. And with that fight, it seemed like they got everything off just right, and they were a little disappointed that they only got the first kill, but after taking the turret, it really pays off, because again, they have a slight gold lead. And they are going to pile down to the bottom lane, pick up that giant wave, and maybe even take the turret down, because Rapid Star is coming up there. Alexich is going to have to defend against the four-man push in the mid lane, though, and immediately the duo lane, Genja and Edward, go straight up to react to this one. Actually, Edward stayed down the bottom. Edward's just going to farm on his own, it seems. And here comes Diamond Prox and Genja. They were trying to get caught out by Mad Life, and they will be the turret down. So as Zubu Blaze, Frost pick up their own turret. It's, it's tricky when you go. Oh, great hook there onto Genja. Is it going to be enough, though? No, he manages to get away. Rapid star, just keep trying to get in there. Mad Life showing exactly why them hooks are vital on Blitzcrank. Yeah, just one, I mean, it's such a game changer, that hook. Just one in the, in the team fight can really change the pace of how things are going to go down. So I have to keep an eye on Mad Life, because up until now, he's certainly uh, been doing the work with it. As this game moves on, Azubu Frost realizes that all Gambit Gaming has is physical damage. And you can see, instead of going for Warmog straight up, which gives you really resistance against magic and armor, since it's just straight up health, they're all going for Sunfire Capes. Shy already has his, Cloud Templar has his, Rapid Star might not be going for a Sunfire, but at least he's stacking early amounts of armor. Chain Vests and Ninja Tabi galore. Azubu's powering up, and even though the gold is really close, the team fight might not be that close. You say they are close in terms of CS, both AD carries were pretty much even, the AP mids are pretty much even, although it's not an AP, like you mentioned, it is Kha'Zix. It's just Shy in that top lane, but Darian, just keeping that turret there, he hasn't managed to get in there. The minions are being wiped out between the waves, but Darren is definitely keeping toe-to-toe -to -toe with Shy at the moment. He's behind a little bit, both of the Sunfire Capes, like you mentioned. And Wung has to be very cautious right now. He's pushing up that midline on his own. Alexic could close that gap pretty quickly. He's up to level 12. He's going to have to the jump leveled up. You can see he's evolved it. The wings are out. But... Didn't go for it, instead chose to back away. They haven't really got much ward coverage further down. They've got the minions pushing in. They have got that one down towards the dragon. Speaking of the dragon, it is up in a minute's time. Blue buff will be next. You can 
see as Zubu started to get ready to play for trying to have a fight for this blue buff. So they are going to get in there. Still a decent amount of time. That's a, a long time to be out of lane, to be honest. That minute and 15, 20 seconds that they've taken to all congregate around that one. Darian actually going back here. I'm sure uh, he's going to spend a good chunk of gold that he actually has on him. There's the uh, Merc Treads for him picked up, plus the Kindle Gem, plus Wards coming out for him as well. And I'm assuming going to come straight down towards that dragon in, the, uh, you know, in time for it spawning. Well, another giant spell comes out for Shy, so Warmogs will follow. But he's going to become a bit of a problem, a bit of a beast. As it were, it's going to go straight down there. And Moscow 5, Gambit Gaming, are starting to get in position. And it's a little strange that Alex each rushed the home guard boots so soon. It's really going to diminish his team fight power in this next situation. A lot of times he can have a lot more AD. If he didn't go all the way for home guard, he might have a BF sword and oh, great hook by Bad Life. The hook for Darian now, and he's in all sorts of trouble. He's not going to be able to get out of this one, but he pops his ultimate. He's hanging on in there. Crescendo comes in. Alex, he's jumped through. Cloud Templar follows through on towards him with the bandage toss there. And Gambit, well, they're just going to have to back away. Turn down on towards Cloud Templar. Rapid Star, though, is in there on towards Diamond Prox. Rapid Star now very low. They're going to try and leap around again. Just going to get dropped as well. It's a double kill for Shy, and they're going to continue on. The blue goes down on towards Edward. Alex just leaps out of the way. They just managed to catch it, but Edward is going to be the next target for Shy. He's going to get flung through, and it's Woom that picks up the kill. It's a four for one trade. And even though the initiation in that fight was amazing by Mad Life, that fight was won by Shy. He is a monster right now. We're only 20 minutes in, and he's got nearly 3,000 health, and in that fight had 200 armor with his alt running on top of himself. There's just no armor penetration coming in from Gambit yet, so he is pretty much unkillable. Oh, there is Alex coming in. He's managed to get the steal as well. And it was wow. with the one single part of it right at the edge. That was amazing play out of Alex. Wow. Cloud Templar didn't use his smite. Whether he was waiting to save it or what, I'm not too sure. But wow, great steal from Alex Itcher. I thought he was maybe going to come in and see if he could get some exit kills, but instead just pops his voice spikes off. Well, Cloud Templar wasn't there, so there was no ah. smite available for Azubu. They really had to spike it down with damage, and Alex just won out. Amazing beautiful, stuff. Beautiful stuff. So top lane, Darian is going up there, and well, you can see he's going to get another big chunk of farm. Really, it seems to me that Darian's going to have to start giving him so beefy. He's almost certainly becoming the target at the moment. They're trying to take him out of the game very quickly, but Shy is just quite happily running through the entire team getting on towards Genja, and Genja's having a few issues trying to keep him away. Edward landed a great crescendo in that fight, kept them all busy, but it didn't matter because Shy was in there, straight in their faces. Yep, straight into him after that one, and Shy, before that fight, picked himself up a giant's belt. After that fight, picked himself, uh, picked himself up the wall mod. So, uh, you know, that didn't take long, let's say that. And uh, they're actually now pushing in towards this outer top turret as Shite just running off towards Darian, probably going to try and force him completely away. We'll see Edward and probably Darian Prox coming to uh, do something about this one. The tower was already low from earlier, though, and that is going to be turret number three. All the outer turrets now picked up by Azubu Frost. Yeah, just one more remaining for... Gambit to try and get along that bottom lane, which you can see Alex is trying to motor on and clear that wave out, but Azubu are starting to stack up in this mid, just seeing if they can take advantage. Wu immediately heads towards the red. It's what he does. As soon as they suddenly have that two, it's down. He wants to see if he can pick up anything from it, try and gather themselves out, put the pink ward in that bush, and now it is all about mad life. Can he land the hooks on towards the tower as they start to pressure on? Alex is continuing on that bottom turret. He's going to take that one down. So you can see Azubu Frost starting to try and get their position going. There's a fight going on just at the top there. It was Shy getting on towards Darien, but they all back away. Still 4v5. Alex is now returned. Yeah, Shy really not taking much damage considering what they uh, really threw at him from that one. And Azubu decided, okay, we probably can't push this one. They're all going to come back in uh, with decent amounts of health from that bit of action there. So let's have a look at the overall uh, gold count right now. 32.3 to 30.9. So nice little health to lead for Azubu Frost. Obviously uh, losing that on that last dragon courtesy of a nice Alex Hitch steal. But they are ahead here in the turrets. And I got to say, this is a much better Moscow 5 than we saw on Friday because yeah. they were, well, not, sorry, I call them Moscow 5, Gambit Gaming, X Moscow 5, but everyone understands where they're coming from. They're doing a really good job staying in this game, just compared to the 0-2 start, 
really good against Izubu. Yeah, and Alex just goes off down the bottom there, picks up another chunk, big, great big wave of minions. And like you mentioned, there's a more Giant's Belt popping in. Of course, why not? Get a little more armor as well, Shy, while you're at it. Just keep stacking out every item that's just really completely going to counteract. What is he going to go for here, Jack? I mean, he's, he's already got the Giant's Belt and Sunfire Cape. One more, is he going to go Thornmail? It's either a Thornwell or a Randwins. He can go either one, or he can just get both, because there's no magic damage threat coming from Gambit Gaming, so if he just keeps stacking up that stuff, he's going to get more and more powerful. Frozen Heart would also be a really good buy. He's hanging around about 200 armor currently as well, so uh, just really hard to uh, to be dented, to be honest, in a, in a team that's all going to be physical damage coming in towards him, and that's going to allow him to do a typical singe thing and just push and push and push this whole time without really having too much fear of someone coming in there and 1v1 him because they just don't have the damage to do it yet. So my question is, yeah, you can see the two Bloodthirsters now, but their last Whisper in there, we're going to get a Black Cleaver almost certainly next for Alex. How is this going to stack up against all this armor? Are they going to be able to shred it down enough? I don't think so. It's a matter of the Last Whisper doing 35%. Sure, the Brutalizer is giving him 10 armor pen right now. But even if they get all of it together, they still need a huge amount of power. And at this point, Genja, even though Last Whisper was the right item, needs a lot of attack speed and crit to even think about denting Shy. Those yeah. creep waves are just getting wiped out every time they come in there, so they are going to have to tank the turret, but if they do keep stacking all that armor up, that's not going to be a problem. They can just walk in and fight the turret. As it is, though, we are going to have a stalemate standoff in that mid lane. A couple of giant spots coming out for Gambit as well, you can see on Darien and Diamond Prox, but that creep wave is getting wiped out just before he gets to the turret. Let's see if Azubu do decide to uh, tank this one. I think it's more a case of Mad Life trying to get in there and pull someone out to them so they can collapse on and force Moscow 5 to either give up one of their players or then go straight in towards that fight. Here we go then, all hanging around by the middle. Actually, Alex just diving away, but Cloud Temple are going to get the ulti down. There is a crescendo coming out of Edward. He's already fairly low, and look at Rapid Star falling so, so quickly. Cloud Temple now the focus on that one. We are going to see Alex Inch come in. He's got the reset. He's going to jump over, gets the slow across all three. Alex goes low. He was exhausted, and then not even finished off by that one. Graves goes down. Madlife pulls Darian in towards the turret. He's going to walk away with hardly anything. Mad Life doing a lot of the same. Gendra actually tanking the turret up there, but Shy isn't able to get around to finish off. Great fight for M5. And Gambit. that was just an example of Azubu over committing and Shy not being the tank that he is. Everyone went in when and got focused, and I'm sure they couldn't kill Shy, but other people weren't nearly as tanky as him. So Gambit did the great thing, didn't focus the singe, focused everyone else, and came out with a big fight win. And so Gambit do set themselves up, and that actually gives them the gold lead as well. And now Alex is going to wipe out that creep wave as well. It gave a Warmox across the Darien. Warmox almost certainly going to go across the Diamond Prox. They're starting to stack their own Warmox health items up. We do see a Warmox being built by Cloud Templar. And uh, previously it used to be all about all about that Guardian Angels, but definitely the game has switched towards the Warmarks. Dragon being picked up by Gambit here. He pitched down below. They are going to get that one for free. That's going to give them another gold advantage, stretching it to a 1k lead in terms of gold. We are still at 3 2 turrets, though. So the lead for Zubu Frost in terms of turrets, but they still, as yet, every time they've come towards poking that mid turret, they don't seem to dent it. And something that's happening here is Alex Each's farm is ballooning. He's at 246 on Kazakhs, which is 30 higher than even Shy on Singed, who seems to have just been free farming and been unstoppable this entire game. Sneakily enough, Alex is becoming a really huge man here with 9,000 total gold. Let's see what he goes in for next. Obviously, he uh, got that Brutalizer, Bloodthirster, Giant spell in there. So, uh, got a whole lot to complement what, uh, what he can do in these fights. Genja also got that Last Whisper, got the Bloodthirster in there. Not too much else right now, but he's got the mobility to, uh, to be okay in those fights as well. And now Gambit trying to push this middle lane out. You see that? Shai taking a couple of hits, uh, which translate to basically nothing. <laughs> Well, Gambit setting themselves up. Is it going to be a poke towards Baron? Just looking towards seeing whether it's just more placement coming out, though. They are going to back off. Alexic going to go back and buy an item. Let's see what he could picks up here. And you can see Alex with the third evolution being his ultimate combined with the Giant's Belt purchase really changes things. Since he decided to go R over Q for Evo, he's going to be getting reduced damage and a third stealth every time he goes in, which is actually going to make him incredibly elusive 
if he would have went the Q, he would have been going kind of all in spike. But that's not what they need here. They need him to stick around and fight, so it's a smart choice. And the other people is an Oracle. I was just thinking, he went back and I thought, didn't see any items pick up. It must be an Oracle. And sure enough, Alex H with an Oracle, which is a careful thing when you're the champion that's going to be leaping into the fight. It's a deadly thing to go for, but nevertheless, he's going to pick it up. And like you mentioned, he's starting to win out that farm wave. They still haven't gone and pinned out that bottom turret. It's going to get taken down by minion waves sooner or later because they have gone towards it. Mad luck with a hook there on towards Edward. Couldn't quite land it though. And Alex will take out another ward. And well, slowly but surely, Gambit Gaming is starting to feel confident here. They're going to start pushing the mid. And Warmog Sunfire being completed onto Cloud, to Cloud Templar. Shy looks like he's going for another Sunfire Cape, but it looks like it's going to be a Randwins. And the big item that might change the next fight is Rapid Star Zhonya's Hourglass. The fight they lost was because right after he ulted, he got exploded. He's going to be able to avoid that in the next one. So, when is that next dragon coming up? 33-17. You can see Alex is actually headed down towards this bottom lane, continuing that farm. And we talked about the Oracles. Yes, he's the first man in there, but he's also the one that's had all that free farm in the last minutes as well. So, he so can certainly afford to add something like that into his repertoire. And the kills spread really nicely as well over Moscow 5. One apiece with two there on, Gen uh, sorry, on Darian as well on Renekton. But both teams hanging around this middle area, neither wanting to you know, make that fatal mistake which can cost you the, the all-important early uh, you know, first game winning the best of three can never be underestimated as Madlife is going to go charging in. Can he manage to pick anyone off though? Can he get that grab down? Well, you can see the hooks. And if he goes for Genja, well, he can just arcane shift out of it. Bottom two, was picked up. Alex is starting to work his way through. And Gambit want to turn this one into the fight. Alex is going to come in a little bit late. They do dive up towards Cloud Temple. They're going to try and force him to see if he can go for that. It's because of the sad mommy instead. You can see Darian, the crunch shot for us. Oh, very nice. He hits everyone. Rapper starts taking down very low. Alex is so too, too deep. He does get dropped down, but Genja's now in the blind fight. But that's Ubu Frost turning this one. The very nice. He rapid start goes down on towards Shai. Shai is very tanky. Goon Whoop just off the side. He's picking them up as much as he can. You can see Shion towards Genja. Genja trying to go, but he's in the poison trail. He's going to get dropped down by the poison enemy. No, Scoon Wu comes in. Scoon Wu taking down very low. He gets dropped. Now Shion's the target. Cloud Templar on towards Diamond Prox. Diamond Prox thrashing out. He should be able to avoid the damage here. And that was a three for three trade, but the Oracle lost on Alex H. And that was actually an amazingly played fight by both teams. Shy was trying to zone up all the damage dealers of Gambit Gaming, but then the important ones jumped past it to get to the back line of Azubu Frost. And from there, the mistake was made that they tried to fight Singe. They should have just turned tail and run immediately because they realize now there's no way they can kill him for a ways yet. Yeah, he saw all of them hammering away at him and, well, just not really making that much of a dent into him. Diamond just uh, protected that middle inner turret there. As we have seen, uh, the Manny Moon picked up by Kazix as well. And he's been stacking that tier all game. He just got the last stacks yeah. on it to become the Mirror Mana, making his assassination potential hugely greater. A lot of people don't realize that applies on his Q. You might see Alex Itch just make Wu disappear at some point if he gets a good jump on him. Well, we will see. He's been farming like a beast every time that bottom wave builds up, which is exactly what Shy's doing right now. Shy's gone back down that bottom. You can see he's actually 40 CS ahead of Shy right now. Now he's heading up towards the top. So they've obviously chose, okay, we're going to get Alex crazy fed. You'd normally see Genja going off to the side doing this. As it is, they're keeping Alex doing it. Rapid start putting the one, the tri bush immediately spot him out there. And there's a thorn mail oh, on no. Shy. Thorn mail. Well, you know, but the thing is, they're not going to go for Shy. Shy is going to be the last target. And that thorn mail, yes, it's going to hurt, but they're, once he's the last target, they're, they're hopefully in their eye going to have a 5v1. So we're going to move into a bit of a quieter period once again. Both teams posturing around this middle area. Genja has just got his red buff. You see there the Oracle running on Mad Life as well, which uh, makes him an attractive target to take down to get rid of that Oracle. And they are now headed into the top side of the Moscow 5 jungle, uh, of the Gambit Gaming jungle, should I say. Yeah, there's another giant spell there for, uh, for Shy, which has been there a little while, actually. And now they are just hanging around in the river. 
waiting for someone to make a mistake and check in there, which, you know, Gambit, you wouldn't expect that they'd go for something like that, but look at this, they're going down for Dragon. Unluckily for uh, Azubu Frost, there are no wards down there, so they can't say, well, they're at Dragon, let's go straight in towards Baron. Yeah, luckily, before when Alex each had the Oracles, he went to split push bottom and he made sure those wards were clear, so they had a pretty good idea where those were, as Darian gets Oh, the Cloud Templars bandage just stunned him, so the hook missed it. It would have walked straight into the hook. Instead, they're going to turn it into a fight, and now they're going to dive in. Diamond Prox gets in towards it. Crescendo comes across. It nullifies the Cloud Templars ultimate, and they can see Gambit Alex leaping on towards it. Darian gets taken down. They're going towards Madlife. Tronic pop on towards it. Madlife taken down very low. Cloud Templar, the next target. Diamond Prox getting the knock up in the air. Alex in on towards Shy at the top there. Shy is actually shredding very low. Cloud Templar goes down. Wound has to flash away. They're turning back towards Shy. Shy taking it down very low as well. But he's going to back away. Alex Inch realizing they've got the advantage. It's a two for one. They're going to turn to Baron. They probably won that fight just enough to be able to get this Baron. Wound is going to try to lifesteal up, but the creeps just aren't there for him. Gamma Gaming also has a lot of wards coming up towards it. They may as well just get this. Baron down to round about half HP. Let's see if they can finish it off. Mo uh, sorry, Azubu Frost won't be able to get anywhere near that one. Actually, Wung is going straight up middle here to try and get on towards that inner turret. This could be a risky play out of him. You burn that flash a little bit earlier on. Does have an exhaust to work with from that uh, from that side as well. But you can see they're closing in on to Mesa Jump from Alex. Doesn't quite get the slow. And Wung is just going to get himself through the wall. But will Genja be able to catch up to him here? They're going to try and catch. But no, it's not going to happen. Happened. They picked it, they said, yep, the rest of the team are there. Pick up the blue, take your advantages. Getting big farm, Darian farming out the big wave up the top there as well. Items all being picked up, more items stacked up here. As it is, Gambit are managing to lay down the damage in the right point. Like you mentioned, Alex has just deleted Mad Life in that last fight, despite the fact his mana shield popped in. It's going to be really difficult for Azubu to deal with this because, yes, they were able to stack armor on their front line, but Gambit Gaming is completely bypassing it. Darian, Diamond Prox, and Alex can all get to the back line. So the armor that Shy and Cloud Templar have accumulated is only applying to Genja, who's also trying to jump past. Now with the Black Cleaver onto Darian, they might have a chance of actually touching Shy's singed armor. We'll see how it plays out now they have the Baron buff pushing up mid. Well, certainly they'll run through the rest of the team, that'd be easier, and then if they can get a shy, if they can get onto him, then they can certainly drop him from this one as they push that middle lane out once again. How far are they going to get with this Baron buff on them? Moving down as a five-man unit, they've seen Shy actually up in the river. Will they peel off and try and take him out? Well, they might be see Gosu Pepper just sticking off the side there, AKA now Edward. Darian's, ooh, had to slice and dice to dodge out of that Blitzcrank. Very nicely done. I would appreciate the skill here. Infinity Edge been picked up by Gendra as well, so the damage definitely amplifying Fort Gambit along with our Baron buff. All avoiding the void spots at the moment. Shy, seeing if you can get anywhere near and on. They're going to see Evelyn down the bottom now. Rapid Star showing himself, clearing out that huge wave. Gambit might well try and bully this one out. Yeah, and this could be bad news as Cloud Templar is actually going to go in there, but walk straight out. Darian going to be flung into the middle of him. Will slice and dice again away from the grab of Blitzcrank. The Jukes have been incredible by Darian in this past bit. Giving Blitzcrank to Mad Life is usually death, but they have done such a good job avoiding his hooks almost this entire game. And this siege is starting to take its toll on Azubu. You can see multiple members are losing a fair bit of health. And if they try to initiate, I think Gambit would fight them. They're going for the turret. Here comes the minions. They're all down there. They're going to try and dive in. They haven't pulled out the Curse of the Sad Mommy yet, but that turret now down to half. You can see Rapid Stars return to it, but again, those Void Spikes keeping on the damage. And Shy is down to half health. He's the strongest member, and he is losing hit points here. Mad Life's just had to go back. They're going to be a 4v3 on the turret. Siege Minion will be coming down in a moment for, for Gambit Game, but they are going to fight it out there, and it's just not going to be enough for Mad Like Those home guard boots are not going to matter. They've backed off. They took the inner turret. They're just going to go clear the rest of the waves and take the blue. Yeah, Blue Buff going to go down and over towards Gambit. Nice work from their side of things. Actually, Azubu Frost going through the bottom side of their own jungle. You can see those wards on the minimap there left behind by Gambit just to keep that vision to figure out exactly where Azubu were going to come out. It's actually a good thing they finished off the turret that early because you can see Diamond up top. There was a huge creep wave that he would have been able to, that would have probably just ended up pushing the turret. And I got to point out Edward has went this entire game without any gold per 10 items. He really just got the Ruby Sightstone and the Kindle Gem has been sitting on it. He's very slowly making his way towards a Zeke's Herald, which will help him a lot when he completes it. It'll actually be the first ore item we see really on either team, if you don't count the Lock of Iron Solari on Diamond. 
This is looking really good for Gambit Gaming right now. Yeah, last whisper picked up by Alex Hitchkin in that armor penetration. Still hasn't gone towards that black cleaver, but of course, why bother when you got that mirror man of bloodthirst? The damage seems mm -hmm. to be coming out enough. They're trying to counter it. It's going to be a Randy and Omen coming out for both Cloud Templar and Shy. But as it stands, they've not been able to go off and get any extra power. And the armor on Cloud Templar and Shy is nice, but it's not really going to help them in team fights because, as we said before, Gambit Gaming is completely bypassing that tank line. They need to get armor onto Mad Life, Wung, and Rapid Star, and they just haven't been able to do that. Right now, both teams again stacked up inside of the middle. Gambit have no Baron buff remaining. That now has ran out. Back up again at 41 41 there, as you can see in the top right of your screen. So, not too long of a time, to be honest with you. It's time that they're going to have to get back up towards that Baron, get those wards down. Alexic does have an Oracle there, you can see. And they're going to be clearing that one out as soon as they possibly can as well. So, Gambit Gaming. Ready and waiting for this Baron to spawn in 10 seconds time. 11 and 11 kills. They have that 4,000 gold advantage though through that extra farm they've been picking up. And of course the turrets all square 4-4. Four, four. Well, this is going to be another dragon picked up. Remember, they got that epic steal, Alex Itch. There it is. They're going to come around the backside now as Zubu Frost pushing up the mid. Are they going to get caught out by position here? Gambit Gaming can come right around the back of them. That ward put down there, that may just be enough to warn them of what's going to happen. Alexic actually pulled away from the curse of the sad moment, but he's taking a lot of damage. Crescendo goes across, Rapid Star is taking a lot of damage, but the focus switches over onto the AD carry. Wung, he's dropped. There is Eshmael going down though as well. Rapid Star with that Guardian Angel, he's going to come back into the fight. They oh. pull Diamond away as well. Oh. He's going to flash away to escape that one. They switch over onto Edward, easy target, and that is a three for one in favor of Frost. And we need to see how well Zubu can push this advantage because that was a huge pull pulled off by Mad Life there. Getting the start on Alex, really completely winning them that fight from the start. They're going to take a lot off of this one. Taking that huge damage dealer out of it. They are going to turn though. They have got the home guard boots, but Diamond Crocs doesn't want to dive too deep. Rapid Star is a juicy target he really wants to get onto. Instead, he could turn in towards Shy there. They are going to continue to chase this one, just beat them away, but it would be a two man versus four and really a naive attack. They are just going to try and push them out as quick as possible. They realize that Azubu are going to try and back off. They're going to go straight towards blue. Could this be the classic solo queue error by Azubu, by Templar here? Are they going to come around? He should be able to smite it away, but he's just not going for it. He's just not reacting. He really should have realized his own blue was up. And maybe with the Baron coming up as well, that smite would be a handy moving forward, but we'll have to see about that one. It's up in... Uh, Around, around about 30 seconds from now, and Azubu need to get themselves home and come back into this one before Gambit get themselves really ready to start that one off. Uh, the, the ward from Gambit actually spotted Amumu on that bottom side as well. Some really good purchases actually coming out from Azubu Frost. Woon picked up the Randwin's Omen, which is honestly the best possible defensive item he could have gotten against Gambit Gaming. Also, Rapid Star completed the Garden Angel and then picked up a Giant's Belt on top of that. So the back line that had been getting attacked so much by Gambit Gaming's dive is starting to beef up a little bit. And we'll really see if that comes into effect. Both teams starting to set themselves up here. Three Randian's Omens all picked up by Azubu Frost, you mentioned. Three, all, That's in, a lot. all in one return. That is definitely going to change things. But the ward starting to come out because Baron is up and now getting ready to have a fight for it. You can see Gambit already in position here. Mad Life with that Oracle has just cleared out a couple of Gambit's wards. And well, Darian's got to be careful. Diamond Prox has got to be careful. He doesn't get hooked from Mad Life there. Mad Life looking to get a hook. He's going towards Genja instead. Clears out the ward. Oh, the hook. Just a whisker away from Diamond Prox there. Instead, Darian trying to keep those super minions away in that mid lane. They're going to have the advantage. They're going to get in. They're going to clear all the wards out. The way Azubu likes to play these situations is they basically fish for hooks. They wait for Mad Life to start the perfect fight for them. But Gambit's not going to let that happen as they go in. Diamond does go in there. Where's the crescendo? They need it out here. There is the crescendo. Curse of the Sad Mummy actually came around. Edward is starting to fall low. There, the Rando is popping left, right, and center. Darian right in on top of them as well. Both teams fairly low HP as Alex Hitch is going to join the fight. There he is. Gets the shutdown. Can he finish off Cloud Temper as well? Yes, he will. He's going to jump over the wall. He's going to oh. come in. Absolutely blows him 
Chicago hops away, triple kill, Edward Majors fall, yes he will, but uh, Rapid is going to get himself away from that, but that is a blue buff picked up as well. But the inner turret is going to fall in that bottom lane, Rapid Star is heading straight towards it, they're going to take advantage, they realise they've lost the Baron, they're going to try and take anything they can from this one, the top turret also going down to Minions, so it's going to be two turrets for Azubu Frost, despite the fact they lost out in that fight, they're just going to tank up this Baron though, they will pick that up for sure, will it be in time for spawns, no it won't. What a crazy game, 16 kills to 16, only a 2,000 gold disadvantage, the turret's in the favor of Azubu, but the gold and the really team fight advantages in the favor of Gambit Gaming, even with all the Randwoods opens, they could not withstand the barrage of physical damage coming up from Gambit Gaming. The problem with them picking up the Baron here is their base is completely harassed by minions, they are trapped in here for the foreseeable future, it'll take a lot for them to be able to get the pressure back in this game and actually take it over. So a hex drink has been picked up there by Diamond Prox on Sin Chow. Also a Warmox finished up for Kazix plus that Zeke's Herald that we were talking about earlier on is now complete on Edward. So getting into the juicy times now, 44 minutes in, the spawn time is starting to uh, really become a problem. If you start to lose fights, you're going to lose base. Yeah, and like you mentioned, you know, the fact that they they are without issues at the moment, but we are at 44 minutes. We saw this yesterday. SK versus Fnatic, once it hit that 50 plus minute mark, their spawn timers get gigantic. And if Gambit Gaming can come out 3-2, 4-2 up in them fights again like they have done in the last few fights, it would be a big, big win for them. So, 16-16 in kills, very even. 5k goal difference, which is not that great when you're talking 62,000 to 67,000. Sent for turrets, and well, Goon Moon picking up that blue buff. Items popping in around all the time. Guardian Angels is going to be back up for Rapid Star in the next fight, which was a big, big difference when they won that last team fight. And I gotta say, this has been a fantastic tournament so far in Katowice. It's standing room only in thousands of seat stadium back here. The crowd is just so transfixed in here. They have been awesome this entire time. And honestly, this game is not going to end in a normal way. Something incredible is going to happen just based on what's happening this weekend and the fact that we're 45 minutes in, but both teams are kind of at a standstill. Something crazy is going to happen. Yeah, and you can see Gambit are backing off. They're going to go by. There's the Bulwark now being picked up by Diamond Prox. That's going to help them out. And Goon Wong has been the target. You can't stop a Renekton, a Kha'Zix, or a Jin Zhao. They're all just going to dive on him. And every time you see it, Goon Wong's trying his best. You know, this is a guy that we've seen cleanse off, remove, buffs, everything. He's, he's avoided 4CC. Everybody's seen that YouTube clip, but they just can't get away because everybody's piling on him. He's really trying to tank up, but at the same time, all the people diving him are super tanky as well. So at this point, do you really have the damage to hold them off? It's going to be so, so close. The problem is here, though, Alex at 372 minion kills is actually maxed out his items. So the longer this goes on, the weaker he's going to become. Dragon here being done by Azumu Frost. Nothing that Gambit Gaming can do about that one, but this stage, a dragon here and there is not the, uh, the, last, the first thing on uh, Gambit's mind, that's for sure. They are pushing now down towards that inhibitor turret, the home guard boots, you can see speed in Mad Life and Shy back up towards that fight. Are they going to be able to get that grab? Minion Wave is there with them, that ward was uh, basically a waste of money from now, and now Gambit are in there. There is, of course, the Banshee's Veil. Perfect item against that Blitzcrank. If he hits it, well, his grab's going to be on cooldown for a while. Um, and with that Banshee's Veil now uh, having a low cooldown itself, becomes even more valuable against a Blitzcrank. Yeah, we saw Azubi plays doing exactly the same thing against N-rated on Fnatic in the last game. Get that Banshee's Veil out. It's a much quicker reset timer on that Banshee's Veil as well. Diamond just checking that Dragon. They didn't realize it had been taken, so Azubi Frost got one over him on there. There's a great big creep wave on the bottom line which they're going to go deal with in a moment. So and Gambit Gaming really not making much use of that Baron. It's going to run out in 30 seconds time. So that means it will be all square once again and Azubu Frost pushing up the mid. And that was the unfortunate thing about them getting the Baron with the inhibitor down and waves of minions just assaulting their base is it was most likely only going to be for farming and for withstanding the base. The game is really going to restart again once this Baron is off, now that the inhibitor is back. 50 minutes, 32 seconds. That's... Exactly three minutes from now. 
And they're going to face off for that Baron once again. Right now, Gambit more concerned about making sure their base is nicely pushed out, that they've not got to think about, uh, you know, returning to base if they manage to pull off a good team fight, um, just to cover all that kind of stuff up there. Ward's put down as well by Azubu. Oh, Gambit going to go for it. Yes, they are. They're jumping in there because the South Army used very early. Alex is just going to get flipped around, but the damage not really targeted. And Crescendo hits the entire Azubu front team. Beautiful from Edward there. Now the damage comes out. Shy is taken down very low. The rock is sliding through. Rapid Star is going to try and come it out, but it's going to get leaped on. That's going to be Cloud Templar taken down as well. Goodwill gets dropped by Genja. They grab jump on towards Rapid Star. One turnaround hit could be enough between the two, but he's got Guardian Angel. There The top to it is in trouble though. That could well take the turret down. Oh, Alex has just gone back to deal with him. Absolutely brilliant fight there coming out of Gambit. Can't they push it any further? Chai now may be in trouble. He's got three men on him. Cloud Templar is there as well. Diamond's not super healthy, but they're quite happy to do that damage as they go through there. Edward going to come in. Those heals could be vital uh, at this point of the game as we are going to see those that turret going down. Inhibitor will go down afterwards. There's still 40 seconds for Rapid Star, 30 seconds for Wound. Mad Life going to be up in 12. Are they going to go here for the finisher? There's the home guard boots coming out. Chai gonna leg it in there at a ridiculous pace to see if he can stop this happening. It's still a 4v2, four, four it's gonna be a 5v2 in a second as well, it's Genja trying to do the damage on the Nexus turret, here comes the spawn zone, Madlife's gonna come around there, Darien taking low, he gets hooked in, and you can see Darien in all sorts of trouble, but Alex is jumped straight in, true shot for Arp, that's his pass, low tempo, taking down very low, Gambit Gaming are gonna disengage, get out of there, take the advantages, they managed to get the inhibitor and they have an 8k gold lead. So Azubu realized that they were weaker in team fights, but they actually did the smart thing of if they're gonna fight, do it on Gambit's side of the map. Because if they would have lost that fight anywhere but there, the game would be over right now. So the fact that Gambit is again winning that team fight just makes them even stronger. Makes it extremely difficult for Azubu Frost to win this game. Now they have to find a way to win the game without winning a fight, which we did see World Elite do against CLGEU back at IPL5, but it is so rare to see. And we've got round about 30 seconds here until that baron comes up mad life does have an oracle on he's put wards in there as well we've now got four randuins over on the zubu frost it looks kind of pretty it does look pretty yeah. they've, li they've lined it up nicely double guardian angels coming out from gambit game and you know you've got your gimmick we're going to respond with ours we always go for those guardian angels and now it's going to be on genja along with alex itch they may come up towards mad life mad life teleporting back there and of course the baron will be up in well, five seconds time, they are seeing Rapid start down the bottom. This one may well get given up. It looks like it as well. They are going to start this one off, Gambit. And who's anywhere near to really do anything? Amumu and Singe coming up there. We've got Graves, Blitzcrank just behind him. Obviously, uh, Rapid Start is further behind us. We are going to see Diamond diving in here. What is Cloud Temple going to do? There is the ultimate coming down. And you see Ezreal coming in to join that fight as well. It's a great ulti out of Diamond Prox. The dispersion really working out nicely. And there's Alex Singe actually diving over on towards Wung. This is an extended fight just because of those items. As we are going to see the Zonyas pop by Rapid Star on camp right on top of him. He is going to go straight down. That's two kills coming out. Edward actually falling fairly low. Womb has managed to survive along with Sims, but maybe not for long as Genja goes in there. And here comes Alex from the side. Genja going low, but he's got the Guardian Angel oh. and finishes it off with one final Q. And Gambit surely are going to win the game right here. Sniped off the side. Shy just the last man standing. And Gambit came in moving in towards the Nexus turrets. Shy doesn't worry. He's just going to try and cause himself a problem but look how fast those turrets are going down. It's going to be Gambit Gaming taking game one here against Azubu Frost. Can they stop the Korean might here in League of Legends? The Nexus will fall and Gambit Gaming take game one here at the Intel Extreme Masters in Katowice and the crowd love it. Absolutely insane stuff there. We ripped a little bit i think we can quite call it in the on the first day we gambit they lost their first two games they looked pretty shaky but i tell you what that was a completely different team that turned up they improved so much in the last two days great boot camping by them yeah so ladies and gentlemen let's get over to the experts and see what they make of that 51 minute game Wow, Panky, what a game. That was so back and forth, and it came down to just those couple of crucial team fights that put uh, Gambit Gaming ahead. 
We all asked for it. We all wanted it. They had a bit of a disappointing showing on Friday. We wanted them to come back with full force today, and that's exactly what they did. That is the Gambia game. That is the Moscow Five we all know and love. They were always this really strong team that could team fight and team fight and team fight over and over again. Their coordination, their communication was always the top notch here in Europe. That's what kept them on top for so long. And we just saw it back there. I mean, Jack kept explaining there's just physical damage, physical damage. All that the players have to do is armor, 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 and they should win those fights. Moscow 5 or Gambi Gambi turn around. No, that's not going to work. We're going to do it this way. You're all going to die. We've got a couple of replays up to show you. But the way they just focus those targets down, managed to bypass that front line. Yeah, okay, it's singed in there. But other than a quick fling and a slow, he's not got any other crew out control. So his tank is just, well, if he does damage, you've got to focus him down. They got up to the point where his damage was insignificant. It didn't really fo focus on them much. As long as they avoided the flings a little bit, he was. Uh, just ignored, and Alex could leap over him, Diamond could charge through him, D uh, Darian used his slice and ability to go physically through him, he used that uh, Singed as the second proc to keep him going into that back line, Wooing and Rapid Star were exposed, even once the Zonis came up on Rapid Star, just like we saw from Soez in the previous game, he melted, wouldn't be surprised to not see any trace of Evelyn again soon. Yeah, we do have a replay, give us a little bit of a rundown, because this is like the first actual team fight in Mos or sorry, uh, I finally failed, I finally called him that. Yeah, this is 25 minutes in, you can see seven kills to three. Shy they already had the back, uh, the advantage coming around the back side, but immediately you start to see the Rapid Star's the first one yep. to go over early. He drops, Edward is off the side, took a lot of damage initially, but then gets ignored because it's only a support, he uses ability, there's nothing much left. Focusing onto Templar, just making their way through this Azubu line. Shy is in there, yes, but he's used his abilities. They're all on cooldown, there's nothing else he can do other than poison them, and the poison's not doing too much. Womb turns around to try and do his burst, a nice flash from Alex away, keeps him alive. Womb tries to dash in, but the auto attack from Gendra's already fallen. Following him, and then it's just a case of chasing him up the rest of the lane. Here is where Shire's strength. Yes, he's strong. Yes, he's got a lot of health. That keeps him alive, but that's just about it. Darian, perfect disengage. Every time they know, then they have to back in when they have to go out. Last heal from Edward keeps him going. And with a couple of turret shots, Azubu do manage to shove him right off the edge of that turret. But it's just that systematic movement through that Azubu lineup through target to target, squishy target, okay, rapid start, he's in stealth, he's a bit hard to follow him, he gets out there, he pops an ultimate, it does hit four or five people, gets a 250 health shield for everyone it hits, but it still does nothing. He just gets burst through. Genja had so much damage to get. To. That was the thing, because Rapid Star, in two or three fights before he actually got that zone, before he got that GA, was going to that back line, trying to pick off Genja every time, and yet he would get blown up. Alex just would just turn around and kill him in a matter of a few seconds. We do have another replay, so we're going to get it actually prepared for you guys in just a second. But we, one thing we didn't even mention is Edward. His crescendos were amazing. Yeah, every time, three, four, five people, and then he'd just back out, sit at the back and do his heels. That's what they needed him to. He'd get a bit risky going in a couple of times. Occasionally, he'd get flung by a uh, shy. If he got burst down there, that would have been possibly the end of their fight, but he managed to get these crescendos off, and I managed to control the fight. He'd then fall back and just keep topping his team up. Heels, movement speed, just keeping them going, doing what a support does best. And every one of those ultimates landed. They completely changed the game. Next replay we have is about 39 minutes, 11 kills apiece on each team. There's a slight 4,000 gold lead to Gambit at this point. They've just taken a dragon, and they try and come and collapse down in onto Zubu in that mid lane. Mad Life's grab makes this fight. Jack pointed out during the actual game. Yeah. We're going to slow it down a little bit and explain exactly why here. We do see Alex has that Oracle, so he is coming straight up past. They do notice there's this ward here from Mad Life. He does just place it. Azubu come in and that grab right onto Alex Itch. He'd normally leap into that and go in the middle, but because he's grabbed him, he has no control over it. He gets exhausted instantly, gets knocked up instantly. He does no damage whatsoever in this fight. Runs off the ignite, takes him down, and it's immediately a 4v5. Edward did get a lot of uh, a lot of people in his Sonar Ultimate, but because they were so far back, the rest of Gambit couldn't follow it up. And while they were all there, Rapid Star and everyone got out of the start, kept coming back in. Genja was very deep by this point. Azuba were able to focus him. Rapid Star, yes, he went down quickly, but he had his Guardian Angel up. By the time he was back out of it, Gambit were all solo health. They just had to leave. Another phenomenal grab by Mad, Mad Life secures on that last kill onto Darren. They chase him back down towards the base. And Shy, again, he's done that point. Yes, he's just an annoying. He's got a lot of health, so he can go wherever he wants in the fight. And now he was able to chase down Edward and fling him straight back in again for one more. And this opens up that turret and the inhibitor for him, which reset really the tone for the rest of the game. They had all those creeps pushing in. They had the super creeps in the mid lane. Opened up the Baron for him. Gave him a large advantage, but again, Moscow 5 came back. That was the one team fight they really made a mistake on. And everything from there on out, they just got it right every time. They did it properly. They took those kills. They took those advantages. And then they got that advantage and used it for objectives. And the amazing thing is, is that every single person on uh, Gambit Gaming had a 
did something they needed to. Like, they played so well. Like, everyone had a role in that fight. We saw Darian, we saw Darian Fox diving into the back, trying to keep um, Wung off of attacking. We saw, actually, the double locks of Aaron Solari to really reduce that damage that was coming out of Singe, which really helped quite a bit, because he didn't build any AP, so he reduced a lot of damage. You had Ghost of Pepper trying to get the heals, the speed buff, trying to keep his AD carry alive, and the crescendos were amazing from him. Um, even had Alex said, she, I mean, he, I have to say, was the key if it wasn't Edward, because he was the person doing all the damage in those fights. I mean, it wasn't doing all of them, but he was the one that was really getting everyone low, really starting to set off the entire fight and really roll it in their favor. Like, the fight would start, Alex would leap in, he'd pick on, he'd unload his burst on them, they'd be low, he'd back away as everyone started to try and attack him from um, Azumu. Then the rest of Gambit would clean up that low health person. By the time that was done, Alex was in a position to come in, pick someone else, nuke them low, run away again, let them clean it up. There was one fight, but we saw it the other way around, Gambit took everyone low, and he went in and picked up a triple kill, cleaning up with the yeah. resets. But more, more often than not, he was initiating, he did that. That burst. That's what we saw him try and do at that time, but Matlab managed to grab him first. That's why it went the other way. And the thing is, he was eating the Amumu ult every time. I mean, it was on purpose, though. He was trying to get to blow it, trying to get, uh, trying to keep, um, well, they're trying to keep Kazix off of their back line, and that would set up his fight because it kept Ezreal cr uh, free, it kept Sona free, it kept yeah. Darian and Dynaplex free so they can get into the back line. That was Edward again. Every time that ult went in from Amumu, the Sona ult went in. So, yes, okay, they were stunned up, as we wanted to do damage to him while they're stunned. Where Azubu was stunned. So they were both sitting right. there, both done. Because the movement went all, all went off first, Gambit would recover first. They still have a couple of split seconds left on that stun from Sona, and they'd be able to start the fight on their turn. Yep. Well, that was game number one. Gambit Gaming, I don't think anyone really expected them to give us a showing like that after day number one. But we're going to go a little bit of a commercial break. We'll be, we'll be back with game number two between Azubu Frost and Gambit Gaming. Guys, don't go anywhere.